Hello, BAJC. We've made it to spring. There are so many wonderful things blooming right now and so many uncertainties around what will happen for all of us in almost every way. So there's a lot going on there. And I, I'd like to offer a story and a bit of wisdom around a Jewish sensibility that I think is important, that has helped me in my thinking around how to approach the great unknown over the next few months. So once upon a time, <laughs> there were two schools of thought. You may have heard of Hillel. Shammai was the other school of thought at that same time. And they debated and had varying opinions on ways to approach life. Hillel's tended to be more expansive and a sense of forgiveness, forgiving, um, openness. Shammai's tended to be more exact and precise and caring about getting things to the letter of the law. There came a time in later generations where there was confusion around whether it would be better to follow Hillel on this matter or to follow Shammai. For the most part, in many cases, we follow Hillel, but in some cases we follow Shammai. Sometimes it's important to be exacting and precise. So in this particular matter, and it really doesn't matter what the matter was, they couldn't decide. They just kept going back and forth and saying, but, but Hillel has a point here, and, but Shammai has a point there. And as the Mishnah recounts this uh, discussion, at a certain point, they said, Elu ve'elu dvarim Elohim chayim. Both these and those are the words of the living God. They still, however, decided to go with Hillel's ruling because, not because it was right, but because the, the custom of the school of Hillel was to articulate the other side's opinions first. And that felt to them that in this case made a difference. There's a lot that we can get from the story and um, I, I have, have preached for many years this Jewish sensibility called Elu Ve'elu, how important it is, how countercultural it is. And I actually think it's one of the real gifts that Jewish culture offers to American culture. Uh, a, a short way of saying this is, um, you don't have to be wrong for me to be right. <laughs> right? Another way of saying this, a very short joke that gets told in various ways, but it's, it's really possibly the shortest joke ever. It's just two Jews, three opinions, right? It's possible for us to have different opinions on things and to still hold a kind of space where these conflicting truths might be able to coexist. So some of the conflicting truths that I need to coexist right now are, you know, desires for safety, desires for coming back together, uh, desires for having any sense of where things might take us in the next few weeks, in the next few months, and starting to plan certain things. And what is that like? I see the ability to hold multiple truths at the same time as a Jewish skill, one that comes from many of our families and, and stories and prayers. How can we create a space where it can be totally true that we want to be together and totally true that we want to be as safe as possible and holding those two truths, really, both of them being very important and not just defaulting to a kind of um, fear-based kind of decision-making in either direction. The fear of loss of being together or the fear of possible contagion. How can we really hold all of our needs together and make really smart choices about how we navigate coming back to a sense of togetherness? So I wanna bless us that as we head into the next few weeks, few months, that we're able to really hold an Elu Ve'elu perspective 
making sure that we balance a desire for safety and desire for all of our other needs as well and and do that in a, in a good way in a smart way i, I want to invite everybody to join us for shabbat morning um tomorrow morning we'll have a service 10 to 12 it'll be our last shabbat morning service uh just as a bhac community in in the month of may so i would love to see you there we also will be collaborating with all of the synagogues of Vermont who are coming together to celebrate Shavuot together. So there's some very exciting things coming down the pike. I'll post a little bit more about it in the message below. Um, I will be leading a uh, mindfulness movement opportunity connecting with themes of Shavuot on the Thursday nights of Shavuot. I think it's May 29th. And many rabbis will be, will be collaborating on a Shabbat service, a Friday night Shabbat service. Just double check those dates to make sure I've got them correct. Um, uh, no, it's Thursday, May 28th will be the, is the first evening of Shavuot. So the revelation dance, we're calling it, will be that evening. And then Friday night, the 29th, they'll be collaborating with many other rabbis and cantors from across the state. And all day, Friday and Saturday, uh, into Sunday, there will be events, um, family-oriented things, some of which you won't have to come on screen for. They're just suggestions of things you can do at home. Um, cooking blintzes, which is a traditional food for Shavuot, a children's art project, many ways uh, to connect with both prayer and Jewish culture for Shavuot. On Saturday night will be a special concert by Nefesh Mountain, who are a wonderful Appalachian-inspired Jewish uh, singing group and wonderful music. So hope to see you at Shabbat morning, tomorrow morning, or on Shavuot, or some other way. I want to, I want to, yeah. I'd, I'd love to see you in some kind of, some kind of fashion, so be well.